Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a different kind of video. I will be talking about me working in Japan. Alright, so you're probably wondering, Brittany, why did you live in Japan? So after college, um, I decided to go teach English in Japan because I knew I would not be able to get a job in my field right away. The reason why I knew that I could teach English in Japan was because when I studied abroad in Tokyo during college, I was told that when you get your degree, you could move back or you could move to Japan to teach English. So I went through the application process which was actually harder than people may think. Just because you get your degree does not mean that you are going to be chosen to go to Japan and teach English. There's a two-step process which is um, actually is two days um, the interview process. So the first day is um, the actual interview with the recruiters and then um, you have to do a English test. And then the second day is the whole day we are basically doing demo lessons to each other, the other um, people that basically my competition. So they only choose maybe one or two out of the group. I believe in my group it was about seven and I was the one that was one of the ones that were um, chosen from Chicago. So that is how I got to Japan in the first place. All right, so let me go ahead and um, dive into the actual job. I was hired as a English teacher and I lived in the Aichi Prefecture, uh, specifically Ozone. And when we first got there, there's a big group of people well, all over uh, the English speaking countries mostly. Uh, so we have people from obviously America, all over America. We have people from England, we have people from Australia. So we're all in this, um, we call it headquarters, but it's this building that house and train the new teachers. The two weeks, I didn't have any, I didn't have a phone. Um, luckily I had a laptop and they had uh, an Ethernet cord, so I was able to talk to my family. I felt like I was just kind of like in limbo, like, <laughs> It was just kind of like, oh my god, even though I already taught in Japan, but this time for some odd reason it was a little bit different because I knew I'll be teaching adults and the um, curriculum was a bit harder than from my last, my previous job in Japan. After the two weeks of training, we are escorted to our apartments um, and also we are excluded to our schools. Someone from headquarters will take us to our area where we're going to be teaching and living and our manager will meet us there. So the manager is the, um, the head of the school. She or he um, will show us around basically. They set up our utility bills, help us get acclimated to our apartment in our area, showing us like grocery stores and the bank. The manager take care of all of that and you are supposed to be listening and trying to like remember these things because your manager is not going to be living with you. So that's the process of what happens after training, two weeks of training is over, your manager kind of helps you um, get through the first week or two. So my commute was about 30 minutes from my apartment, but my walk to the train station was about 10 to 15 minutes. When I got to my job, I met my coworkers for the first time. Um, I met my head teacher, so that was the teacher that I would go to if I had any problems with curriculum or a student or a parent. And then I also had the other native teacher. Now, funny story, when I met the other native teacher, he's an Asian guy. I just assumed that he was the other Japanese teacher working there. And as soon as he opened his mouth, he is a American man with a Louisiana accent. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, you're the other native teacher. He's like, yeah, I, I thought you would be confused. That's why I wanted to speak to you right away. I had students from the age of one to the age of, I believe my oldest student's student was 67. Um, so I had a range, like 
from that age from 1 to 67 I taught every grade and I taught all different stages of adulthood so I was a I was really nervous to teach adults because with children from my old job I was used to children I was good with children but teaching adults you know especially that's been in English school for a while I had to make sure I, would, I knew what I was talking about yeah you're probably wondering what was their reaction when they saw me and for the most part adults uh, were like oh okay hi uh, you know very friendly and you know excited to take my class but the kids I knew that they would be like <gasps> you're brown <laughs> or you know you're black or your hair or you know all the all the things that I've gotten at my old job I knew it was gonna happen again but luckily I have thick ass skin so yeah it was one boy actually I remember him I'm not gonna say his name but I will say <laughs> I use this name a lot for mischievous boys when I name it in like a video game or anything or a story when he saw me he was like <gasps> a black person in Japanese and um, my Japanese is okay so I just had to pretend that I didn't hear <laughs> well I just had to laugh it off because I heard it and I was just like don't show it on your face don't show it on your face and I was just hi nice to meet you and he's just like oh <laughs> he didn't want anything to do with me and this kid I'm like of course this kid is in my class it was um a range of different reactions when I first walked in the classroom some kids did not care that I was a foreigner and that I was a black um, person a lot of my little ones like my kindergartners were kindergartners first grade and second grade they were the ones that probably would say something a bit rude in Japanese there were like some kids that just wouldn't want to touch my hands they called me monster in Japanese or something like that you know and I was just kind of like give it time they'll get used to me and you know everything will be fine and it actually was to my adult students uh, I actually didn't really enjoy teaching them because I was able to speak more casually than I would with the children and also teach them really cool stuff about like America or black culture which they were interested in so that was really nice other than that teaching the students was fine it was a great experience and I love that I was able to teach um, kids and adults from all different ages and backgrounds all right so I want to talk about my daily routine my daily routine started with me uh, getting up around 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning doing some chores and um, cooking some breakfast and getting my lunch or my bento ready for my work day. My work hours were from 12 to 8.30 but I usually got home around 9 o'clock at night so majority of my day was spent at work. So I knew whatever free time that or hobbies I wanted to do I had to do in the mornings because by the time I got to got home at night I was dead tired and I would probably just take a bath and get ready to go to sleep. Now I did have chores at work that I needed to do when I first got in which was we'll have to go to each of my classrooms to see if it's clean, markers are placed right, vacuum because cleanliness and tidiness is a very big part of Japanese culture. I had to do a lot of prep before my students even showed up. My classes were 40 minute classes, 40 or 50 minutes, I'm not sure. I was constantly busy at work and then I did have an hour lunch break. Yeah, that was my typical daily routine at work. Um, I would say everyone was pretty nice. Uh, I didn't have major problems. The Problems I did have were like from the company because I was a teacher they also would try to make us sell different things and I was just like oh like additional supplement um, English books and and just all this other stuff that I was like look I don't do this but that's neither here or there. Alright so some of my duties um, outside of work but pertains to work was that I had to do a lot of mandatory training. Sometimes there were just one day training, sometimes there were two days 
training it just felt like there was a lot of training i was like bruh we trained with you guys for two weeks and also mandatory drinking parties <laughs> You're probably like, why Why would you complain? I'm not complaining about it, but the only thing is when you're drinking with your company, like, you have to pay equally. It doesn't matter if you just order one drink or one snack. They're like, yeah, it's just the Japanese custom to split everything evenly. So when I was spending that amount of money, I was like, I might as well go ahead and get drunk because I'm spending $30, $40 anyway. But you know, most of the time it was quite fun. You know, you get to see your students in a different light. Not obviously not the children, but my adult students. And I actually really built some relationship with some and I'm still friends with them now. Those were my duties outside of being in the classroom. Quickly, I want to talk about my work attire. In a Japanese office or building or job, uh, women are strongly requested to wear a little bit of makeup. They wanted us to be business attire. You know, I look like I was always going into like the courtroom. <laughs> so I was not able to express myself visually. So I kind of felt like besides my skin color, I was blending into the society and I was just the artist part of me was just like, ah, oh, I just want to break free. Japan can seem a bit like, you know, there's a saying, a Japanese saying, the, the nail that stands out gets hammered down or something like that. So standing out and being your own individual person in the workplace, it's not something that's good in the Japanese um, work environment. My job, my manager, she allowed me to be creative in a way that um, served our, our business. So a lot of times we would have to come up with a fun class for our, um, for our kids students. We came up with this Pokemon class and I was able to draw the advertisement and post them all over our, um, our office. Or sometimes we had this like this chalk board where you can use these like colorful chalk, these colorful markers and I would make all types of fun designs for the kids to see when they walked in. They always like, they knew Brittany Sensei did that and so that was always fun and I um, incorporated a lot of arts and crafts into our lessons because Japanese kids really love to draw and I noticed that and so that was always something that I look forward to. There were a lot of good times that I had working at that office that help shape my experience as a professional and also as a person so all right my final thoughts are japan is great also it helped me build my confidence as a black woman when you're in japan there's not a lot of people that look like me so sometimes i always felt like the spotlight was constantly on me and i had to represent my country and my race um but sometimes it got a bit lonely because you want someone to understand how you feel i'm very happy i worked in japan and i wouldn't change that experience for the world but would i want to move there again and work there again hell no <laughs> I am totally happy here, but that is my second home. I will always want to visit Japan every year. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want more travel stories, because this is not the end. I've traveled to 600 countries. Also, I do want to talk about my experience teaching in Japan for the first time. And this one was the second time. The first time I was straight out of college, I was immature, I was all over, I was a hot mess. That culture shock hit me like a ton of bricks. Like, share, and subscribe. And I haven't said this in so long, but brown girls be traveling. Peace.